Hi everyone, it's lovely to see you. Hi guys. Hi Joe. Hey, we are joined by a very, very special guest today. Um, Josh, I mean, this, this man is, is Mr. Ood as far as we're concerned and we are, we're very lucky <laughs> to, be, to be chatting to you today. Oh, you're so kind. <laughs> so we wanted, to, we wanted to do um, a, a bit of exploring of Oud. I mean, Oud is something, I guess, we've talked about a lot of fragrances with Oud in them, and we've not a kind of a couple of oils, but we thought we'd, we'd devote an episode to exploring Oud oil, and then we realised we simply didn't know enough about it. We just don't know. <laughs> um, so that's, that's why we've asked uh, for Josh's help. Um, so, so Josh has got um, an Instagram account called uh, uh, Smelly Vision, when he sampled lots and lots and lots of um, oud oils and atars, as well as like fragrances, you know, traditional uh, uh, well, Western um, spreadable fragrances. Um, and he's helped us um, choose a few oud oils to sample. Yeah. So a few, a few uh, which he's kindly um, sent to us from his collection, and then he also um, suggested some oils uh that we should sample from uh Mellifluence, um yeah. who's uh he's the kind of how would you describe him he's a natural yeah. perfume maker a tar maker in uk yeah he's an artisan and he's very good at what he does and he certainly charges a reasonable price for his products anyway in terms of you know what it has in it uh, he, he favors the use of naturals with not a lot of synthetics um he uses real oud real deer musk uh, and he's doing something very unique, a, a good price point, I feel, personally. Really, really, really Fantastic. good price point. Um, to Oud, uh, <laughs> where, where do we start? Where do so, you start with Oud? I mean, I guess when you, know, when you um, Oud, as we know it in the West, I guess M7 uh, from Yves Saint Laurent is, is the kind of, the, the first example. Like, yeah. like, you, you would often get either a synthetic Oud, an Oud Accord, which is an Accord, you know, be, uh, built uh, around other materials, which doesn't actually contain any oud itself, but gives you the impression of oud. And then yeah. you have real oud oil. So that's what we're talking about today. Well, oud, oud to me is um, it, it's such a complex material, and you will never get two people saying the same thing about one particular oil. People will pick up different things from it. People will pick up different nuances from it. Um, maybe it'll remind one person of a particular place, a particular time in their life. And it, it's the only natural material that I can think of where it's just so complex. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we, like, we've done a lot of kind of talking about fragrances where we say, oh, yeah, you can, hit, you can smell the oud in that, you can smell the oud in that. We've got um, nine different uh, samples we're trying today, from, all from different regions. And they are so different it almost yeah. seems ridiculous to put them under one umbrella term. I mean, yeah. if, if we smelt all of these without knowing that they were oud, I would, I, would challenge, I would challenge a lot of people, including myself, to actually know that they were all oud. I would say, oh, that's, that's interesting. That's, like a, that's a really amazing incense. Or that's a really f sort of animalic fruity thing. I mean, they're, they're all so different. Yeah, and the sort of stereotype of uh, oud um, from people who haven't smelt the raw oils before, um, enough variety of the oils is sort of, you know, barnyard, um, you know, funk, that sort of cheesy smell. Um, whereas, you know, some ouds are like that, you know, you get a lot of Hindi ouds and due to the, the soaking and the preparation of the, the materials before it's turned into an oil, it gives off that accord. But then you'll get such beautiful, pretty light oils as well, like, you know, Thai oils, Cambodian oils, or then you'll go to the, you know, the sinensis, the Chinese oils that have a, a bitter profile to them, um, almost an insensitive bitter profile. And like you say, Joe, you'd be wondering if you were smelling, you know, the same raw material. There's so much yeah. variety and, and there's so much out there for people who, you know, they might not really like the sort of funky cheesiness of food. I do personally sometimes, mm -hmm. but a lot of people don't like that. And there's just so much out there for, for people to try before dismissing Oud oils, in my opinion, definitely. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's funny that we like um, it's something you see so much in like, Western perfume now, and it, it we kind of we talk of it as a new thing to Western perfume. We, when was M seven? Was that ninety late nineties? Was it two thousand and two yeah. or three? Oh, two thousand two. Yeah. So that's quite a late what, one, I think. Twenty years, but it's actually the you know the oldest perfume material. You know, there there is pretty much like Joe was well, saying, it's mentioned in the Bible as well. 
yeah yeah it's mentioned in the bible it's mentioned in uh, hindu texts as well um uh, it's mentioned in, in buddhist texts uh, and the earliest introduction of uh, Oud to the, the West, as far as I'm aware, was actually King Louis XIV, who, who used to perfume his clothes with Oud and uh, rose oil as well. So he was sort of the <laughs> creator of the first rose Oud. Um, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, there's heavy emphasis of Oud in the Islamic traditions as well. And, and in that sort of area in the Middle East, uh, where it's been prized for thousands of years for its... Not, not just its ability to smell good, but its spiritual qualities as well, its spiritual properties, its healing qualities. Um, and it's used in Chinese medicine as well. Um, so people don't just smell it, they eat it as well. <laughs> oh, really? Nice. Yeah. Bit of scrambled egg and oud or oud on toast. You know, lovely. Yeah, <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah. um, I think it would be quite... So we've got nine different regions. Not nine different. We've got, actually got eight different regions, but we've got mm-hmm. two different Thai because I think they are quite different, actually, the two Thai ones we've got. Yeah. Um, what have we got? Chinese, Laos, um, Assam, North India, Cambodia, <laughs> Burma, Thai, and then a Thai from Trax as well, Indonesia yeah. and Malaysia. I, yeah. think, I think it'd be quite interesting to start with uh, the Chinese, because, mm. as I say, I think this is one that if I smelt it on its own, hand on heart, I wouldn't identify... <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a really pretty uh, oil. It's very unique. Uh, it embodies the typical sort of uh, Chinese profile as well. Uh, it's a vintage oil um, and it really is really very beautiful. Now, what I get from it yeah. is sort of a, a, a bitter quality, um, maybe sort of a Chinese medicine herb, you know, cabinet quality to it um, and, and a bit of sort of bitter honey as well. Um, some slight sweetness that balances it out, but it is, it's probably one of the most bitter oils that I've got mm. in my collection. Um, and it's something that I do enjoy a lot. I, uh, it's, it's, it's inter- interesting we're saying about like different things. I got the, the thing I thought, I thought it was, I thought, I thought of vetiver. I got this quite mm. dry, grassy, herbaceous. Um, and if you had told me I was smelling a vetiver oil, yeah. I honest, I, especially, especially, at the, especially at the beginning. I would yeah. have believed it. Um, if you said to me a patchouli tobacco, yeah. I would have also I would have also bought that. It's it's incredible. This is three hours in now, and it's it's taken on an almost I don't know like an almost green damp earth thing. Yeah, which I can't quite describe. It's beautiful. It, it it does have a wonderful sort of green quality to it, and it's quite tenacious in the opening as well. Um, yeah. But when it settles down, it sort of mellows out. Things come together. And it'll be definitely interesting to see what this oil is like in you know a few years' time once it's it's aged a bit more because they do change as the age you see, and yeah. um, it tends to smooth things out a little bit. Um, but it, yeah, it's definitely one of my most favourite oils, really. But I also get like, especially at the beginning, I get like boot polish and paint. I know, yeah. like, Joe, you always you love the smell of <laughs> that kind of paint quality. And my I really get thing. that. Yeah. But you do get that with a lot of oods. I mean, a lot of people that I speak to, the, uh, they'll say, oh, that smells like TCP for some reason. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially with Malaysian oils. You know, a lot of people will say, oh, that smells like TCP. <laughs> I wonder what that is. Because I, I remember really vividly watching, and it's a sort of slightly off, off topic, but watching a video from um, the Canadian chap, uh, Batawi. And I can't remember his name, which is terrible. Christo. Oh, Christo, yeah, yeah. Reviewing Riam by Eldo. Yeah. And he said it, got, it, it had a sort of bandages and like a bandages and medicinal sort of quality. Yeah. And I know, I just, I know absolutely what he means. And I've smelt it in a few things. And it, yeah, I think TCP is right. And so, well, I mean, some people might not like it. I love it. It reminds me of my grandmother. Well, they do say that oud does have an antifungal and an antibacterial quality to it. So maybe that's, that's yeah. that quality that you're picking up from it. It's basically with these, um, I let my wife smell some of them. Uh, and basically her reaction was either that smells like poo or that smells like <laughs> some kind of medical cleaner. So, <laughs> yeah. so that's nice, isn't it? That's nice. <laughs> but, it's good to know that we've got some nice clean poo though. Also, <laughs> is, is, this, is this developed? I also, I got a bit of booziness. I felt that it's a little bit, it's a tiny bit harsh at the beginning. You know, we're talking about mm. um, boot polish, paint, TCP. I felt 
and a bit of vetiver and that but that did kind of dry down and the whole thing actually did go a little bit smoother um it had quite a big transformation actually it lasted a long long time and i just mm. where where i was after kind of six eight hours was a long way a long long way from where i started yeah and did you feel that the project well on you then done oils well i i mean i was surprised that yeah my wife noticed noticed them and even though you know, the amount we're putting on so i'm just you know i've got these little tiny paper clips here you know they're tiny tiny yeah. I don't know what we like 0.1 of a, a mill I'm putting on hardly anything and lots of them I could smell them all day I can smell them as you know as I kind of walk my hand past myself um mm. yeah if some find people think it's complaint uh, go on sorry uh, Joe I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm getting wafts of it now coming off my arm as well I mean I think mm. possibly possibly they're not what people often call nuclear or you know beast mode and all that kind of thing but I think they're more yeah. subtle than that I think I, I don't think it's possible for perfumes like this to be the nuclear loud shouty things because it, it would detract from the beauty and the complexity of them. Yeah, and, and the thing is with oils as well, it's the, the quite selfish experiences, especially with oud oils. It's something yeah. that you're wearing for yourself Yeah. Um, because most people don't like them, really. <laughs> so it's, so, it's a good job. It's a very project. good point. <laughs> but this, um, you know, as you were saying earlier, Josh, this one especially... As it, as it kind of went on, I really felt that kind of meditative quality. You know, I kind of mm. really kind of went quite zen and kind of zoned out and, and it actually became more and more addictive as this, you know, as the smell became smaller, I felt mm. it kind of drew me in more and more. It's almost narcotic. Yeah, uh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. But I would love to, I can't, I don't know of many fragrances, you know, perfumes, which include Chinese oud. I can't. No. I, mean, I think Triad's got it. Triad oh, really? does have, I'm sure it does, yeah. I think it's an organic oil, um, yeah. but I'm sure Triad has a... But the thing is with Triad is I don't get much other than the rose, really, in, yeah. in Triad. I don't really Is that the Yeah. 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 Anyway, it was just... I think it was an interesting one. It was the first one out of all of these that I tried, and it kind of, like, like knocked me for six a little bit. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> this, is yeah. a bit, this is a bit different to what I, I was expecting. Not yeah. what I think of... Um, as traditional food. So should we, should we go to Laos now? Yeah. Just down the road. Yeah. Now for me, I, I think this is a bit more um, what I was, you know, what you expect as food. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. almost got a leathery quality to it, like a dark, earthy, leathery quality. Um, with yeah. overripe fruits, but very dark. Um, and interestingly enough, it's the cheapest out of all the the oils that I've sent you. But it is a it's a it's a good quality oil for the for the money that I paid for it anyway. Definitely, definitely more funk to this. Yeah, I, I love this one. As as we as we were testing these like, over the over the week, we we had a Facebook Messenger group and we were kind of like saying telling each other what we, what we thought. And when I first smelled this, I was I had a really, really specific memory, which may not sound that, that nice, but earlier earlier in the year I went to um Fez in Morocco. And Fez is quite famous for its tanneries. In particular, it's got one absolutely vast open air tannery. And what they do after pulling most of the fur off, they put all the hides in vats of pigeon shit. <laughs> and that ha kind of has natural ammonia and things which strips the rest of it. And the smell of leather and shit <laughs> it's kind of what i got which is kind of what i'm going here which may not sound that attractive but it kind of but it, it really it really is for, for me this is the one that i i would most associate with the oud i've come to sort of recognize as well yeah that it is the funky animalic like slightly off off fruit yeah yeah like overripe fruit mm. uh, yeah like leathery uh, maybe a bit of s smokiness in there as well. Yeah, um, well, I agree. It's very, it's very traditional. In fact, it's called Laos Classic, so it's a it'd ah. be sort of a classic interpretation of, of oud from from that region. Um, the other, so we talked at the beginning. We said the difference between synthetic accords and um, and natural ouds. So within natural, we kind of got two main subcategories, haven't we? We got wild. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the Chinese was wild, wasn't it? Whereas yeah. this one from Laos is, is a cultivated, I also call it organic, but it basically means farmed. Yeah. Yeah. 
but there, there, there are different categories within that. For example, in some, it's how do you categorize wild? Because wild by definition is a tree that's out in the wild, but it may be that a hunter is going out and interfering with that tree. Um, so in a way that's, that's also cultivated as well. Um, the, the, the reason why wild is so prized is because the, the in fact, the trees are generally older um, mm -hmm. because there's no commercial interest in cutting it down. Cause it's a, it's a wild, well, it's a wild tree in the middle of nowhere. So it's not somebody's product. So it's an yep. older tree and the infection um, uh, will have developed over a longer period of time. So it's more resinous as a result of it. But then yeah. you're getting a lot of people within the organic uh, field of foods that aren't using uh, chemicals to inoculate and that are leaving the trees for quite a long period of time. Um, I think Ensar released an oil uh, recently, I'm not sure if it's still available, called I think it's Udi Aku, um, where it was sinking grade argawood uh, chips that was used to distill the oil but it was from a cultivated tree which is almost unheard of but there are people that are wow. sort of creating organic oil to the same standard as you would get wild and there's yeah. some you know organic oil or cultivated oils that are better than wild oils so it, 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 it's a slip it, it's it, it's it's hard to define which, which is which anymore really. yeah so so sinking grade is something i've heard before but I don't know quite what it means. Well, it's basically if you take an oud chip and you drop it in water, it will sink down to the bottom. Oh yeah, um, I, 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 kind of, <laughs> I kind of got that much. But, but what, so why, why is that good? <laughs> because the resin content in the wood is so high. So it's oh, the resin okay. content they cut. But, but then yeah. you'll get um, different categories within sinking grade, like sinking grade that sinks really fast, sinking grade that will sink halfway down. And yes. so on and so forth. So there's, there's different categories even within that as well. Ah. It's so it's so far away from a kind of meeting in a Chanel boardroom somewhere, isn't it? So, <laughs> yeah. What do you twelve yeah. people think of this? Yeah, well, um, you, you, bliss, blissfully far away from that. Yeah. Oh, but this, but this, this Laos. Going back to this uh, last one, Laotian. I never know how to say Laotian. I think Who it's Laos. A, it's a funny um, word to pronounce, isn't it? Laotian or, or Laotian? Or... <laughs> but I found. It's quite funky at the beginning, but actually, mm. for most of it, I didn't find it massively funky. And I found it's mm. uh, it's quite an attractive, leathery, slightly chocolatey, slightly caramelly. Um, mm. It's you know, it's quite a big, bold one, but mm. it's it, it, in a way after the beginning, not too challenging. It was yeah. quite yeah. I don't know if it's straightforward is the right word to say it, but if you if you want a, a warm oud this is it you know this is yeah, certainly yeah. what i had in my head as the idea yeah, it has a sort of appeal doesn't it yeah mm -hmm. it'd be a good win winter oud, a good good oud mm -hmm. for uh, wearing in, in winter to sort of warm you warm your yeah. cockles a bit maybe yeah. yeah i mean it's uh oud palau by diptych is laotian oud from laos isn't it yeah. i mean it'd be i mean i presume that must be synthetic because if they're doing it on the scale that diptych do it I'd be surprised if they have yeah. a, you know, a reliable source or... And it's, it, and it's like a hundred quid. It, it'd, be the con it'd be more the consistency of it than anything because I mean, yeah. each tree is going to have different resin content within it um, and then you're going to be producing one batch of oil. How do you know you're going to get the same batch of oil with the same properties? So I think these larger companies do it for two reasons. It's, it's price... So synthetic makes sense to them in, in that sense, but it's also mm. consistency as well yeah. because they don't want somebody coming later on and complaining that their batch is different to the one that they, they bought yeah. previously. So I think that's why yeah. they do it more than anything. Mm. Yeah, I mean, one, one other question we should have oh, maybe like <laughs> had at the beginning, but so we've got all these different countries and some of them have, they've got quite different profiles. And so I just get, is that down to kind of, you know, climate, earth, uh, yeah, you know, types of soil and things like that. Uh, well, so sometimes it can be a number of reasons. I mean, sometimes it's the species of tree. Like, for example, um, sinensis, which is a species of oud tree, is, I think, native to China, uh, whereas krasna is, is native to uh, certain areas of, um, I think, is it uh, Thailand and Cambodia and places like that. Mm. Um, whereas uh, uh, malakensis is, is native to certain other areas as well, like in Indonesia and uh, Malaysia and places like that and yeah. also India as well so some of it is down to the species of tree mm. some of it will be down to the environment uh, but a, a big thing is it's the distillation and it's how it's distilled as well which is going to affect the uh, the profile that you get from the oil also yeah 
I mean, because we're looking at um, kind of nine different regions here, you know, as examples of a, of a Chinese, as examples of a Hindi. But obviously that's like saying, you know, this is a French wine, this is a Chilean wine, this is a Spanish wine. Like within that, obviously you've got yeah. a massive spectrum of, you know, from the really expensive to the really cheap to... But we can't talk about them all here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's... Should we move on to Hindi? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wow. So this is this is North India, isn't it? Like Assam. Yeah, it, it right? will be that region. I'm not I'm not sure of the exact region, but I'm sure it will be North India. <sighs> Let, I'm going to give my help a fresh so one good. actually. But the, this is the, the the you know the barnyard funk. So when people yeah. say wow. barnyard, I mean they mean they mean animals yes. who are pooed in their hay. I think that's that's basically that's pretty much it. People mean when they say um, barnyard, isn't it? Um, yeah. I've got a slightly different interpretation of barnyard, which is quite a specific smell. It's lots of animals that have gone into the massive cheese room at Whole Foods in High Street Ken and done a shift in there. <laughs> it's all that funky cheese and all of that barnyard funk together. I mean, I, oh. I, I'm, I'm not going to get too crass, but I did say, I think my description was, it's, it's as if I'd done a whole, eaten a whole stilton and done a poo. That was, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it is quite a so funky, uh, challenging opening. So why, why is it? Why is it? Is it kind of fermented or? It's the fermentation. Um, you, it, it's it, it's the way the the oud is soaked beforehand, um, and and a lot of the time it's the cooking temperature as well. It's the temperature that it's cooked at that that will bring about that result. Now, some people are of the view that you know soaked or uh, oud oils aren't you know of a good quality. Whereas others think, well, it's the traditional way that it's always been done. Um, yeah. Therefore, you know, I, I enjoy it. But the, the thing is with, I believe, Indian oils in particular, is it's hard to, to sort of garner any significant yield if you don't soak the wood, uh, which is why I think that Hindi oils in particular tend to be more soaked than, than other regions, let's mm. say. And, and some people believe that by soaking the wood, you're going to increase the yield. But others say that's nonsense. That's not the case. Um, so it's, there's a wide spectrum of opinions on to soak or not to soak. Yeah. Um, me personally, I prefer oud that hasn't been soaked for too long um, because it, it distorts the profile and mm. it's often a way to hide the quality of the wood because when you're soaking it, you're smelling all that funk. That's not really the oud that you're smelling. That's a bacteria that you're smelling as a result of that. Yeah. Underneath there, peeking out, you'll, you'll get the oud. Whereas if you if you don't soak, it's hard to to mask um, the the quality of the the wood. It sort of speaks out straight away if it's not been soaked for a long time. You know if it's a good quality or a bad quality. Yeah. Um, but Indian oud is so soaked for the reason that I mentioned previously. <clears throat> it's um it's because uh, I did feel with this one. I mean I know we're saying this. We've probably said some slightly like unattractive things about the opening <laughs> of this one, <laughs> but it does it does mellow quite a lot. Um, I yeah. found. I found comparing this to, if I, especially if I compare it to the Chinese, I felt um, it didn't last as long and it didn't uh, develop as much. And I just didn't have such a, a broad scent profile as I did for the Chinese. I felt like the Chinese just took me on this massive long journey. Even now, it's kind of, it's, it's changed a lot from that swipe, which is what, 15 minutes ago? Um, yeah. Hindi, there was some some development. I did, I did really, really enjoy it, but it's just, you know, if I were to compare those two, for instance, Mm. I think you've just summarised oh, the difference between wild and organic, yeah. really. And that, that's what a lot of people will find is that wild oil, it's more nuanced. There's more, there's more of a development there. It takes you on more of a journey, which is why it tends to be more sought after. Whereas yeah. organic oil sometimes can, not all the time, but sometimes it can be a bit flat, yeah. uh, which is what puts people off organic oils once you, your nose has developed, um, you know, sticking various oils. Yeah, yeah. That's so interesting what you say about the, the soaking though. I mean, I had no idea about that. And I, you know, I would have smelled something like, like the Hindu oud and the funkier, I would, have, I would have thought, oh, the funkier, the better. That means that it's, it's a more realistic oud or it's a more, a more natural oud. And actually, I've just thought of it now more like truffle oil. You know, you can, mm. you can actually destroy a flavor of a dish with like a load of truffle oil. Yeah. And it's such a powerful smell. You think, oh, this is, this is bursting with flavor. And actually it's not, all you're getting is truffle oil. Yeah, yeah underneath mm. is the essence being masked. Mm. It's really interesting that you say that. I hadn't thought about that. Mm. Well, I've got a, I've got a Hindu upstairs that I was going to send you, but I've only got like a, a gram of it. 
Uh, but that's it's very little minimal soaking and you don't get any funk at all. Um, maybe a slight bit of hay, but not like nowhere near the sort of funk that you'd get in, in you know, the oil that I sent you. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It's the soaking that, that causes that. Um, yeah. But H Hindi oil is hard to get any decent yield if, if you don't soak it, apparently. So that's why they choose to do it. Awesome. So let's we move on to something um, completely different. This is one of my favourites, I think, uh, which is the the Ko Kong, um, oh, the, wow, the, yeah. the the wild Cambodian one. Um, mm. oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm going to give myself a few swaps to remind me of this. But this is like I feel very very different to, to mm. all the all the ones we've talked about. Uh, so far and I, I was saying again this is what i said when i was smelling it i got golden grams and jasmine yeah, yeah. <laughs> um let me remind myself of it it's like a sweet honey um like a floral <laughs> sweet yeah. honey oh um, wow that is amazing isn't it <laughs> yeah almost slightly toasty as well yeah yeah mm. like uh, sort of almost like marmalade in a way if, mm. if that makes yes. sense yeah i got um Oh, it's interesting. We did a, we did a, a, a review recently of Bee by Zoologist, and that's kind of this big, big, thick, rich in your face um, honey, but with some like complex floral swimming around behind it, and that's kind of what I'm getting with this as well. This big, thick, lacy honey, but it almost feels like you know organic honey, which isn't that sweet. Mm. It's kind of bees it's alive. Waxy. Yeah. Uh, when you put it on the skin, it's 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 alive, and it's the same with the Chinese oil. Previously, when you put it on your skin, it just pops straight away, yeah. and, it, and it entices yeah. you in. It's not flat at all. Um, it's a really really yeah. good quality oil. Um, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Because it it does that thing in perfume, like that I that I've loved about things like like Timbuktu, that it has a radiance. Mm. It, it yeah. really it's sort of a real glowing presence that it has. It, it doesn't just kind of sit flat and heavy no. not at all and, and it sparkles it's just yeah. Yeah. yeah but i think i think three hours yeah. old and it's beautiful i just feel like you go and you've got all these like almost flowers just kind of floating around like if you've got mm. um my parents have got a really nice kind of like jasmine bush outside and sometimes if we sit outside for a barbecue late in the evening you just get this jasmine spreading it's like aura around you yeah yeah and and it's such an amazing thing and oh, wow this is really beautiful <laughs> top top stuff like and then, so, I, I know what you mean about the golden grahams comparison as well because <laughs> um, i'm a big big fan of golden grahams so as soon as you said that i thought yeah definitely yeah <laughs> um yeah i think it, when you say like golden grahams it kind of belies the, the level of beauty here <laughs> um, but it's the, it's there's the nothing wrong with golden grahams would you say this is closer to what you know top oud is all about well it, it's works. wild yeah i mean it, it i mean to ask people you know what's the best it's like asking people you know what's your favorite song but in terms of the cambodian profile you can't really go much further wrong than that i would say mm. it's from imperial oud they, they make really good quality oud oils and that's still available on the website now uh, but that, that is a wild oil. It's from Kokong um, shavings and chips that they've distilled it that they've collected over a number of years. Yeah. Amazing. I was looking on a map as well, and Kokong is kind of like on the southwest coast of Cambodia, kind of like right by the sea. And you can just imagine all these jungles full of trees by the sea. And yeah. That's what I like. Yeah, does it, I was, that's actually an interesting point. Do you think it makes a difference in terms of location? Is it like a vineyard? If it's getting some sea breeze, does that do anything to the oud? It must do. Is it like that? Yeah. It must do. You know, you know, I mean, all these things, you know, will affect it. Where it's grown, is it in a mountainous region? Is it not in a mountainous region? Yeah. All these things must must come into effect. God, it's like a rabbit hole, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, Absolutely right. Amazing. Where should we? Let's just trot across to the next country. Is next country, isn't it? Burma. Yeah, is that Burma. Burma. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. Actually, it goes. It's Cambodia, Thailand, then Burma, isn't it? I think. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, it's just Thailand's next to uh, Cambodia, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, so we're, we're, okay, let's skip a couple of countries, but we're still definitely in Southeast Asia. Um, yeah. So we've got some wild, we're now onto the malignant ones, wild north Burmese. Um, again, really, really, really different. Mm. Uh, let me just I love this one, one as well. Myself. See, I, I got a, um, 
sort of a, a bitter citrus top note to this. Um, it's very resinous. It's very dark, but underneath there, I got some citrus, and I know that you guys didn't didn't really get that from it. No. The first thing that hit me with this, I have to say, was like smoked coffee. Yeah, I definitely get smoke. I get really dark, like almost soil, like. Mm. Oh. Yeah. It's but definitely I kind of incense get, here as well. Mm. I get burnt kind of incense. But I get, I, I got the image of like a really, really dark jungle floor. Like almost like, um, you know, like the light couldn't get through the canopy. You know, yeah. so no, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not talking like, I'm not talking a jungle floor where you've got loads of brightly colored flowers. Almost something where it's just dark, you know, wood that's died and soil and the light hasn't got that much. The thing is with the Burmese oud oil as well, is it tends to be a bit of a, a mishmash of everything. You know, a lot of people get a lot of different things from Burmese oil. Some people will get like maybe a Malaysian profile in it. Some people will get the Chinese profile in it. Some people will get a mm. Thai or a sort of Cambodian profile within it. Mm. So it, it tends to be a sort of um, bit of everything. It's a bit of a mix of everything for some reason. I don't quite know why that is. I can kind of... It's very austere, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I suppose to the Cambodian one, which is very uplifting. It's austere. And in a way, that it feels like a slight relation to the Chinese, which is a bit more kind of meditative and like, yeah, you know, kind of thought. Grounding. Grounding, definitely. Rather than uplifting, it, it grounds yeah. you. But I, 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 I still get a kind of slight kind of dark fougere kind of feel. I definitely feel it's, mm -hmm. for me, you might disagree, but for me, I get that kind of foresty feel as opposed to just burnt wood and incense. I kind of got... Yeah, kind of a dark green. Hint of boot yeah, polish as well. Yeah, like an earthy sort of quality to it, definitely. Hmm. This is some of those nice porcini mushrooms that you add water to and, and it, it sort of yeah. intensifies them. Yeah. A little bit, maybe. I'm just, yeah. I'm not disappearing, but I've dropped the, li the lid of that, of that <laughs> North Burmese and I want to find it. Yeah. So I am here, <laughs> yeah. but I'm just but finding you, it. It's, it's down here on the ground. You're going to spill it all over the place. Exactly. I don't want that to happen. This, this, so but I have I to say, this is another one where my wife just says it smells like TCP. But um, oh, no. <laughs> loads of people feel that way. Like I've had a really, really nice, good quality Malaysian oils where I've said smell that, and the first thing they say is, "Oh, it smells like TCP." <laughs> or I've had really good Thai oils, and I've said smell that, and said, "Oh, it smells like wood shavings." You know, like a um, like if you're at, um, a, a woodcutter's plant or something it. like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. I'm like, can't you smell the apricot? Can't you smell this? Can't you smell? Oh, no, no, yeah. I just smell, just smell wood shavings. <laughs> this, but this is, the, this Hello. is, this is another one which I did feel it, like on the skin. It really does unfold and it becomes more beautiful and complex. Was, and it's, I'm surprised oh. by the, they're of a good quality. These oils that he's, um, his supplied is with. I'm really surprised to be yeah. honest with you. Really, really good quality oils. Um, so do we you got another question. Sorry, go on, Dan. I was going to say, we did pay for these. We bought these um, um, from uh, Malifluence, who he sells yeah. up to, up to kind of three grams, but he also does these little sample, um, these tiny little kind of sample bottles, which is what, which is what we did to um, you know, get a chance to just kind of tr have a little go at a few. Sorry, Joe. They're really cute, actually. They're really cute. <laughs> I, I was vials. just going to say, yeah, they are really good, aren't they? Um, so all of these things that we're smelling, in most of the sort of Western perfumery that we are used to, they make up a base note or a, a sort of middle note. Mm. It's, it's quite interesting to smell them all as perfumes in their own right. Yeah. I, I, I mean, so to think how you would then utilize these in a wider scale perfume is a really interesting question. I mean, it's, who, it's, who almost, knows? it's almost sacrilege to think about doing it when you smell them by themselves. Yeah. And you think, you know, do I really want to mix this with anything or do I want to? use them by the cells or yeah. you know it's, it's almost sacrilege to think about put mixing it with something else really well totally i mean i i would yeah i would happily wear any of these as a as a standalone thing is it should we um th uh, let's talk about one next the the, the wild cow yai one because yeah. i'll tell you in a minute but there, there's a oh, fragrance I which i which i imagine the, the, the fragrance I'm thinking of, it's probably a synthetic oud, but I kind of feel like the perfumer has taken the idea of this mm. and kind of tried to make an oud accord. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about it um, yeah. and smell it a bit and then we'll get to it. So this is the 
well, wild cow yaiud, which is um, it's Thai, Thailand, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But it's quite um, it's a great big national park, which almost borders um, Cambodia. It's very hard to get hold of now, uh, from that region, as far as I'm aware, from that particular national park. Anyway, I think it, the only thing hanging about now is uh, previous harvests. I don't think they allow people to go in there anymore and hold, hunt ood in there. Oh really? Oh, but this it, it's so different to the uh, trap. You, you know the other Thai oil that you've got. It's much deeper and yeah. uh, denser. This. It sounds like a stupid thing to say, but when like one of the first things I wrote about this is intensely woody. It mm. just smells really strongly of wood, yeah. <laughs> which, which may sound like an obvious thing to say about you know a wood, but just really like it really does. Yeah, smell. <laughs> and and with that, I also got a bit of um, this was such an interesting one. This changed loads and loads and loads on me. I got like creosote and like the kind of tar that you paint. Um, Woods like you treat woods with you know to make it yeah. waterproof that kind of dark top i kind of got that and so i got citrus in this more than in the burmese i think like a bitterness as well it's got like a bitter woody quality to it yeah really bitter. yeah yeah you saw, something i got from this was like a, a dark oh josh has gone there yeah. i got I'm a really back. dark like dark mint chocolate yeah yeah, yeah, I got a real mintiness. Mm. It, it's probably because of the the bitterness and the intensity of it that's giving a menthol like yeah. quality that you're getting from it. Definitely, but it's really, really think, good. But what what was interesting about it is you started with this, and then I found like it, it progressively got kind of fruitier and fruitier. I got these mm. real like stewed dates, and you know like and okay, the, the fragrance which I'm thinking of is a fragrance uh, from Lartisan Parfumer which is uh, Alloud by Bertrand Duchefort. Now, mm. I don't imagine, given you know, the kind of t- company and the price and things, that there's probably not any real oud in that. But the oud, it's a real like stewed dates and stewed fruit and oud. And I almost yeah. wonder if he had smelt an oud like this and thought, mm. of course, I can't work with this on this scale in this context. But, you know, being the absolute genius that, that his experience is, that he tried to kind of recreate something like yeah. this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and yeah, I agree with you. It, it, mellow, it mellows out, doesn't it? Um, like the bitterness yeah. and the woodiness dies off, and then, like you say, it goes to all the sort of uh, stewed dates, sort of you know, ripe fruit accord mm. within the. Uh, within the very, profile, very so. approachable. Yeah. Mm. I think it's. Uh, is it, it, when we, if we talk about the trap one in a minute, I felt that's even kind of more approachable. And this has kind of got all the approachable qualities of that, but it just gives you a little bit more complexity, you know, yeah. because it's got the kind of bitterness in that. It's almost like the Chinese mixed with the trap in a way, in mm. terms of that bitterness and that, that woody quality to it as well. And it's got like a sort of a sharpness to it. Mm. Interesting, like going back to the incense one, having smelled all of these ones now, I now get, I said incense, I meant to say Chinese because I was the thinking Chinese. incense. Like I now, the Chinese one now smells of incense. Yeah. Especially compared to where we are at the start of this um, Kaoyai one. But it is quite animalic as well in its way, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I get a bit of a musky quality to it, definitely. Yeah. yeah Again, it, maybe that's due to soaking. Yeah. It's interesting. I get more, more, more of a, a musk than a barnyard quality. Yeah. Oh, that this is because of the slight sweetness to it. I, I think that's really amazing. Mm. That's really, I really like this one. This one's really, really good. So, should we try the other, mm. um, the other Thai one? Yeah. So, this is the Thai Borai, which is from the Trat region, which is, you know, it's one of the kind of regions I was kind of slightly aware of it kind of seems to crop up a lot um no I've not tried this one on skin yet apricot ice cream oh really <laughs> yeah yeah definitely I just remind myself of it. um yeah this was now this I did I do think this is this has got more funk when you first put it on but, oh, but that goes wow. quite soon. I mean, I did, yeah, I get, I definitely see what you mean by apricots. Mm. Oh, I definitely got fruit. I got, I got some cherry tobacco in this as well. That's, yeah, 
that sweet wow. tobacco. Yeah, I can see what you mean there, definitely. And like figs and, you know, it's got that thing of like, you know, as if you had a fruit salad and you left it out in the sun for the rest of the day, that kind of thing. It's, I mean, it's very, very beautiful. Yeah. I mean, and it's it's something good. that everybody would love. I mean, if you put this on somebody who wasn't, you know, familiar with oud oil mm. and you said smell that, they would probably say, oh, that, that smells quite pleasant, that smells quite nice. Yeah. I don't think you would... Again, this is one... There is a bit of funk at the beginning, but certainly if you came to me after wearing it for half an hour, I don't... Almost don't think I would say that's, you know, that's not definitely oud. It's not like the Laos or the Hindi, which have got that, you know, real strong kind of woody profile this is more mm. much more fruity and tobacco-y and it's almost like a perfume in itself and that's the beauty of oud it's it's almost like it's, it's one single raw material but it's almost like a perfume in itself and each one is like a perfume in itself with base notes yeah. top notes mid notes and development yeah. i'm getting a lovely sort of like card or paper vibe in this that mm. i sometimes get i love that i don't know what that is but god it's good an orange oil, I'm getting. One, it's one of Joe's yeah. favourite notes, isn't it? Paper. Any, yeah, anything that has yeah, that paper. like new, yeah. new exercise book. In fact, does this smell? I've, I think I've been making some notes on here. <laughs> <laughs> has a little bit of a smell. It's Probably mostly, smells of oud now. <laughs> it's mostly the, the Mermaid's Oud that I dropped a little bit on there. Are you I a mean, big fan of uh, Santal 33 then, Joe? I, imagine if you I, sort, like of li I sort of like it. Um, I think I need to wear it properly. I've, I've worn it like once or twice and put it on card, but I need to, I think I need to give it a, a proper wearing for a day or two and see. Hmm. But something I'd seen by Lata and Parfumo, that's got the, um, it's got all that kind of like brand new magazine quality, but it's yeah. also got a bit of horse dung as well. So that's a real like. That's a, that's a gem for me. <laughs> this is so good actually. I'm just starting to get like a slightly smoky tea thing or something going, I like going on as well. Yeah. I definitely get smoke and tobacco, and I, I, I felt like a cherry kind of tobacco. I'm getting yeah. too much funk now. Mm. But this is this it is, is quite more, funky. This isn't um, an organic one, isn't it? This is a cultivated. Uh, or is it, uh, it, it will be organic, yeah. yeah I think, yeah, because yeah. it'll, it'll definitely yeah. be cultivated. Most trat is is cultivated anyway. Mm. Yeah. Actually, but go back to that that the the other tie though, the cow yai one. Beautiful. Oh, it's really it's changed. Like, yeah. It's kind of like a like that you know that Mexican mole sauce that they have. Molasses. What? Sort of mole. You know mole. No. What's that? It's like a. It's a sauce that they sort of put on chicken and things. It's like a dark chocolate, chili kind of sauce. Mm. It's a really savoury dark chocolate. I think nice. I'm going to buy that definitely. Which one? That's Which one? The trap good, one the, or the or uh, the, 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 the uh, 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 What is it called? The uh, Kaya. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, that is really beautiful. It's nice. All, all that fruit. There's just a lovely kind of radiant kind of sweetness to it as well. Not like a Barbecue, cloying thing. Yeah. 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 But but there's enough going off as well with the bitterness and everything else to keep you yeah. keep you interested yeah. in it and it plays with you a bit. Lovely. Um, we've got two more. Should we, should we yep. do, how about the Indonesian next? No, so it's Indonesian, uh, yeah. Pon, Pontianak, is it? Yeah, it's uh, Kalimantan, I believe, which is Borneo. Okay. Nice. Um, I enjoyed this one a lot. I'm trying to find a uh, paperclip that hasn't been... Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm running low on paperclips. <laughs> uh, let's put it there. That's the interesting thing with these things, isn't it? How... You know how to apply them. I still, I still can't quite get used to the process. I'm <laughs> yeah. so used to sort of oh, in the mornings. Yeah. It's it's a pain. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I don't really use these to go out. You know, I, I use my spray perfumes to go out, and um, with this, it's more a personal thing. Like I say, it's more about relaxation, yeah. and and mm. it's very, it's it's a spiritual thing as well. And a lot of people think, oh, it's, it's just being a hipster, you know, saying that, but it, it really <laughs> is a. Uh, it's a but spiritual I, thing. Even with, you Absolutely. know, like the kind of the Sultan Pasha Atars, which are, they're much more perfumes in the traditional Western sense. I so still normal. wear them in kind of quite a self-indulgent kind of sit at home and, and just kind of, just let the journey unfold. Like it, it definitely feels yeah. like perfume for you. It's, you know, it's perfume lover stuff as opposed to it clubbing. Is. Yeah, absolutely. So I got quite a lot of greenness to this. I got some bitter green. I got spice as well. I think this is kind of the spiciest one. 
That is really good. That's really good. With me, I get a green sort of other. It's almost otherworldly. If if I can sort of like put that into words, I can't really. But you get almost like overripe banana peel, um, an earthy soil-like quality, um, peppery, um, (sighs) spicy. I'm almost um, getting like 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 kind of stones. Covered in like an algae that have been out in the sun. <laughs> I didn't know. That, mineral, like a, rock like a mineral. Yeah, 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 yeah like a mineral, mineral quality, yeah. quality, yeah. Stunning. I definitely get that soil aspect. Yeah. Or I'm, mm. getting, I'm getting something almost like, like beetroot. Mm. Like that yeah. really earthy, earthy beetroot yeah. kind of that thing. really earthy, yeah, uncooked beetroot, yeah. God, I tell you what, <laughs> that is a really good smell. <laughs> yeah. I would see. I would never. I would never actually mm. wear these to to go out. I, like you say, I would, I would sit there with my paper clips, <laughs> and just do this all day. I mean, it's it is it's a real spiritual thing. Like it's like a, it is like meditation or something. And not to sound yeah. kind of silly, but no, no, it's not at all. It transports you away. But then, it? but then it's it's interesting to think about how you know a distiller like you know like Russian Adam and Dmitry Borchakov like from Philid, who they they are distilling these ouds, so they're gonna. They're going to love them and be obsessed with them. So they must have an oud and think, right, this is amazing, amazing. What can I add to it that will just amplify and, you know, and do homage, like, to complement this natural material? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how do you, how do you even begin? Amazing. It must be difficult. It must be difficult for them because, you know, I mean, like you say, they're in love with the raw material itself and, the, and maybe they think themselves... Should I really be adding this to to make a perfume? Should I not just keep it as it is by itself? Yeah, um, and yeah. I do have a lot of respect for the distillers because they're the ones that are out there in the you know in the field, uh, the source in the woods. They're putting themselves at incredible risk doing it uh, financially as well. I mean, it could be that they end up with a duff distillation and they, they end up with next to no yield. You know, they never really know. Yeah. Um, so the well, source like, is dangerous. I, I I loved like those videos of. Um, I think probably uh, a Russian Adam, Dmitry Borkov, and of Ensaru kind of like trekking through jungles like mm. to get wood and then like taking spring water from like the source. And it's just, yeah. you know. It's, like it's most... art. It's the yeah. people like that have made distillation into an art form rather yeah. than a, a business. Yeah. Um, yeah and and, it, and it, it shows in the quality of the oils that they, they put out there. Um, oh. This is what makes me so annoyed about perfume today is that a, the perfumer is never really credited very much. Yeah. Uh, B, in this case, um, the distiller in the first place, like you say, is is doing all of this incredible labour, and it's yeah. it's sort of um, it's completely unheard of and thankless. Well, yeah, I mean, the, it's a real, it's a real shame. Well, I remember when Dan asked me, he said, "Who distilled these oils from um, from Abdullah from Malifluence? I said the, the distillers remain in the background for the most point, unless if they've distilled their own oil and they're selling it themselves for, for a couple of reasons. And, and the main reason of that is, is that the, the reseller is afraid that somebody's going to go out to the distiller and um, undercut and the, them in the market yeah. or, 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 you know, take, take away their source. Um, yeah. So, you know, a lot of these distillers work, work away in the background. Well, we really appreciate them. That's all I know. One more. That's so good. Oh. Got the Malaysian, so, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Now, I got something which I don't know if, if you think I'm, I'm nuts. I, I'll tell you, I'm just going to remind myself of it. See if I still. You are it. slightly nuts. Yeah. <laughs> well, but in a good way. Nuts is the word. I'll tell you why. Yes. And then I'll tell you, Joe, there's another fragrance which I know you smell that like. You might think I'm insane. Hang on a second. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Almonds. I get almonds from this. Yeah. I definitely got almonds. And Joe, yeah. the, the, the fragrance I'm thinking of is Burnt Cedar Rainbow Doves. Yeah. Which is a from, fragrance by Sarah. 4,162 states, which is almonds, cedar, and civet, which sounds like the most bizarre combination ever. <laughs> but that's kind of what I get here, almonds, cedar, and civet. I don't know if I'm going mm. crazy. No, there is a musky quality to it. Um, yeah, definitely in the opening. It, to me, it shares a lot in common with the uh, the, the oud from Kalimantan. Um, only maybe it's mm. slightly muskier, slightly which, earthier. Which, which one's the Kalimantan? Uh, the Indonesian one. Oh right, okay, yeah. 
so it shares a lot of similar properties to that only it's not as peppery mm. um maybe a bit muskier as well but it shares a similar sort of uh, profile to it it's quite oh. playful mm. I, i'm so tempted to go into the living room and get the, my burnt cedar rainbow <laughs> and do a side by side <laughs> comparison it was just you know just sometimes you you smell something and then your brain just instantly go ding and then you kind mm. of can't get it get it get it out of your head yeah do you know what's really funny? And I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not slating this other fragrance in any way. I'm not slating it. But this is, this is Royal Oud. And there is, in fact, a Cree fragrance called Royal Oud. Yeah, they couldn't be further apart. I mean, I, I'm not saying anything about that other fragrance. But this, no, no, I mean, no. this is so full of personality straight away. Royal Oud is just peppery, isn't it? It's pink so, pepper more than yeah. anything. Yeah. I've got smoke it's slightly as well. toasty as well. Yeah, yeah, toast. I get like smoke, like burnt, like. I get, but that's maybe why I was because I've still got this burnt cedar rainbow doves in my head. Well, I found the Malaysian, lot... uh, Sorry, Malaysian oils are some of the uh, the most favourite oils from people in the West. It's the ones mm. that people tend to buy the most of Malaysian oils. So it's the most popular ones. Yeah. yeah. A lot going on with this one. I felt like it's, again, it took you on like a real journey. I'm getting something really familiar there as well that I can't put my finger on. Is it burnt cedar rainbow doves? It is that, but it's something <laughs> else. This is, and it, it'll come to me at some point. Again, That's sort like of sweet, ripe isn't... banana, like overripe mm. banana. That's what I get from it. Um, it's the same with the Indonesian yeah. as well. Hmm. <sighs> it's almost got a little bit. It's got a little bit of sort of Kimi's ten something i it's that slight like carnation -y leather. Yeah, yeah i definitely get leather i definitely get some leather with this mm. yeah i'm getting leather now you've said that <laughs> we're gonna have lots of good like potential cover shots of us all going like this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just really beautiful as well they're just very approachable again there isn't a duff one out of all we've tried. No. I don't think that there's a single one where I'd think, oh, yeah, that's no yeah. good at all. That one's a bad oil. Absolutely. Yeah. So what what have we missed that we haven't? I mean, this Vietnamese is another one which I was kind of aware of. <coughs> Vietnamese and Sri Lankan, I would say, would be the um, two main ones that we've missed. And um, Brunei as well, which I wish I'd have sent you some, uh, some oud from Brunei as well. Yeah, um, but it's very rare to be able to source that nowadays. Apparently, you can be you can be shot for trying to source uh, wild oud oil. Uh, sorry, wild yeah. oud in, in Brunei, apparently. But but anyway, um, this is I, so good. I mean, Josh, like, thanks so much. I like. I feel Anytime. it's been um, it's been such a pleasure, but it's been such a, a massive learning experience. Yeah. And, it's just a kind of a great perfume ride. I just feel like I've discovered this whole world and I've just started to scratch the surface and the yeah. scratch and sniff experience is amazing. Well, I've, I've learned a lot, uh, sorry, learned a lot as well, because I mean, obviously it's great to get, you know, reactions from people who are relatively new to it because they tend to be the, the most accurate because there's no preconceived notions in, in, you know, your heads of, of what something should smell like. You just smell it and say, this is what I get. Yeah. So yeah. It's great to hear what you, what you all thought. Yeah. It's going to be so nice to smell other perfumes now and try and decipher other oud perfumes. Yeah. And try and decipher what's going on. Where's that from? Is that like the Burmese one? Is that like the, is that like the Malaysian one I smelt that day? You know, I, I think it's, you, it's kind of opening a Pandora's box. You'll all be oud snobs from now on. You'll all be like, this has got <laughs> real oud in it. <laughs> We're soon to go throw out half of our collection in the next couple yeah. of years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing though. Oh God. Actually, I mean, like, I know, like, that the track. I was just reading up, like, and I was looking on a few um, people who sell oud, and everyone's saying, "Oh, cultivated trap. That's real, like, kind of layman's oud almost." I, yeah. it, it felt like people were kind of like looking at it, but it smells bloody good. Like, it smells good. It smells yeah. good. You know, and at, at the end of the day, some people like trap, some people like hindi, um, mm. and, and you know, trap isn't bad. It's it's good, and it, and it's a good gateway for people that want to get into oud. Mm. Um, there's nothing wrong with trap at all. For me, the Chinese, the um, the Kokong Cambodian, and the Khao Yai Thai, I think they're probably my three favourites. Yeah. Um, 
But you've got good taste, Dan, definitely, because the, yeah. uh, the, the you know, the Chinese oil is just phenomenal and the Kau Kong one is, they're both amazing oils. Yeah. Well, what a treat. So I think yeah. that, that's about it for now. So to yeah. see, um, for us to say... We should, we should do this again in the future, I think. With yeah, definitely. Some more stuff. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure lots of people out there are going to have lots and lots of uh, recommendations for things we haven't tried. And of course, as we said, we're only trying one oil from each region at all. So of course, I'm sure there are far, far, far better oils and far, far different oils. But if there's anything else you really think, oh, you definitely should have tried that, maybe comment below and, and um, we can have a little sniff. Yeah. Until yeah. next time, happy sniffing. Thanks to Josh. Thanks, guys. See you later. Thank you.